guys, what's up? I thought a good topic for this next video would be how did I get interested in astral projection? So all of this, as I mentioned, started a couple of years ago for me, uh, all due to an accidental experience. January of 2014, I had a lucid dream. Now lucid dreaming itself is something I've just done periodically throughout my life. I've never put a lot of effort or time into it. Uh, it just sort of happens spontaneously from time to time. Uh, but this particular instance, I, uh, I thought to myself afterwards, what if this is something I could do more regularly? What if so this is something I could learn to induce intentionally? Uh, because uh, it's a lot of fun. I spend a lot of time flying around and how, you know, where else do you get to do that kind of thing? So I decided I was going to do some research. I read a couple of books. I picked up one by a guy named David Wagner and another one by a guy named Stephen LeBurge. And uh, after reading those books, I wanted to continue my research. So I went to YouTube and I decided to see what YouTube had to say about lucid dreaming. Uh, so it didn't take long for me to come across a term I had never heard of before uh, when searching through YouTube. And that is astral projection. Uh, so it only took a couple of videos on astral projection to convince me that that was complete and utter nonsense. Yeah, absolutely crazy, crazy stuff uh, that I did not believe in whatsoever. Uh, but if you did a search for astral projection back in 2014, uh, the very top of the list was a guy named Nicholas Newport and his series called Lucidology 101. Uh, so he has a few videos that talk about different methods of inducing astral projection and these out-of-body experiences. And one of them talked about what he called a ramp timer. Now, a ramp timer, he says, is a super sneaky, cheap, easy way to get into the out-of-body state um, and basically help you have an out-of-body experience tonight. And I thought, well, what's the harm in that, right? So um, I decided I was going to dedicate one night to this to prove to myself that it was absolutely crazy. Uh, the next morning, I would wake up, I'd have a good laugh, and then I would continue on with my research in lucid dreaming. Uh, so I went to his website, lucidology 101 Dot com, I think, something like that, and I downloaded his mp3 files uh, that, he that he provides so you can create your own ramp timers. Uh, I created a playlist on my phone to uh, set up these intervals of, of beeps, and let me back up. Now, so essentially a ramp timer, the way that this works is um, you've got a, a period of silence, uh, so let's say four to six hours of silence, and then after that four to six hours of silence, what you've got is you've got a, a series of beeps followed by little blocks of silence in the middle. So these different intervals of beeps, uh, the, the goal is to have those wake you up and then you fall back to sleep. And then they wake you up and then you fall back to sleep. Uh, so this puts you on the awake, to, uh, the awake asleep threshold. And um, according to Nicholas Newport, if you can hover on that awake asleep threshold, then that is where the magic happens. So I, um, where was I? I, was, I downloaded these MP3s. I, uh, I put them together in a playlist. I put about four to six hours of silence uh, in at the beginning, uh, followed by intervals of beeps every six minutes. So I, I put my headphones on. I uh, climbed to bed, went to sleep just like usual. And about three in the morning, the first interval of beeps went off in my ears. Uh, so it woke me up and I fell back to sleep just like I was supposed to. Uh, the odd thing was when I went back to sleep, I immediately went into a lucid dream, which was pretty cool and which was really what I was interested in learning how to do anyway. Uh, so the next series of beeps goes off, it wakes me up and immediately I think, oh, I'm going to write this lucid dream down. I'm going to go write it in my dream journal, which is something I had just started, uh, fairly recently. So I stand up, I get out of bed, I, uh, go over to my dresser, I pick up my dream journal and I start writing. And that is when I look around and I realize that things are a little bit strange. Um, I notice that the mattress on my bed is actually hanging off onto the floor. And I think to myself, I don't think that I'm awake. I think this is, a, I think this is still a dream. And just then, another series of beeps goes off. The next ser uh, series of beeps every six minutes goes off in my ear, wakes me up. And I think, man, that was weird. That was, that's what I've heard is called a false awakening. And so um, I said, I'm going to write about it. I get out of bed. I walk to my dresser. And about that time, it, it occurs to me that I don't know how long I've been listening to these beeps. And it's, pr 
probably about time for me to get ready for work, judging by the light coming through the window. So I decided to, I'll write about this later, put my dream journal down, I walk into the bathroom so I can take a shower, get ready for work, and I'm not in my bathroom. I walk through the door and I'm standing outside on some kind of grassy hill, and I realize I am still asleep. So this is two false awakenings in a row. The next series of beeps goes off, it wakes me up, and I'm still asleep again. It's another false awakening. So I go through six of these, and by the end, the very first thing I'm doing every time I wake up is I'm looking around and I'm doing these reality checks that they talk about in, uh, in books. You know, you hold your nose and you try to breathe with your nose plugged. If you uh, look at your hands and your hands start to melt and look really bizarre. So I'm doing these reality checks every time I wake up because every time I wake up, I'm still asleep. So now this very last time, a, a series of beeps, beeps in my ears, I really do wake up and I'm laying there in a bed, uh, but I've got this intense electrical vibration pulsing through my body. It starts at my lower back and my whole body just feels like it's shaking violently with this electrical pulse. Uh, and at the same time, I've got what I can only think are, of are uh, auditory hallucinations, I guess is the best way to describe them. It sounds a lot like a jet engine or a train engine, you know, running in your ears. And I'm the only one that can hear this, but, you know, between the two sensations, this was, uh, what's the word for it? Slightly terrifying, uh, I suppose. Um, so, okay, so I've, I've got these vibrations going. I've got this massive sound, you know, reverberating in my head. And uh, right in the middle of that, through all of this chaos, through all this noise, I hear a voice very, very clearly, and it says, if you don't get up now, you might not get another chance. And so instinctively, you know, I didn't even stop to ask, what does that mean? I just sat up. And when I sat up, it was a lot like uh, climbing out of a swimming pool. So you know when you're pushing yourself up out of the water, you've got that resistance of the water pulling you down, uh, and then it gets easier to get out as the further you get out of the water. So it felt a lot like that. Uh, I sit up. And I'm looking around my room, and uh, it looks just like my regular room, with one distinct difference. Everything is sort of radiating, glowing with this ambient purple light. Uh, and absolutely beautiful and incredible. Uh, I get out of bed, and I realize that I've done it because I'm still conscious. Um, and this is different than a lucid dream. So for those of you who've had lucid dreams, one of the things that that sets these apart from what I've, what I've, uh, what I've come to know as this out-of-body state is, is my senses. So in a lucid dream, my senses tend to be, uh, I guess the word would be kind of deadened. Uh, if, when I touch things, it feels like I'm touching things through like a thick rubber or a thick leather glove. I don't have a really, a really distinct sense of touch. Um, my sight is often very uh, nearsighted in lucid dreams. I got to get really up close to things to be able to see them clearly. And even then they tend to move around a lot and don't have a, a real, you know, a real solid form like they would have in reality. I'm not able to read text and I'm not able to, you know, see minute details that I could see in reality. Uh, so between sight and touch, those are the two primary senses I have when I'm lucid dreaming. I could tell that something in this particular scenario was very different. Uh, so I could see everything crystal clear. Uh, my mind was working 100% just as if I were conscious. Uh, I remembered everything from two minutes ago, you know, when I was laying in bed with these vibrations and this roaring in my head, and there was no gap in consciousness between that. It was, I'm laying there terrified of the sensation that's pulsing through me, and now I'm out of body, and there was no break in, no lapse in consciousness. So as I start to explore, I'm wandering around my room, and uh, I'm, you know, starting to leave my room and go out into the hall and go into the bathroom and look at just how amazing everything looks. Uh, the next series of beeps goes off in my ear and it pulls me back. And at that point, it's, uh, if you've ever experienced where you're falling asleep and you feel that, that, that sinking sensation, that falling sensation right when you're falling asleep, it felt like that. There's a, an abrupt falling and a you know, a slam back into your body and I sat back up in bed and uh, this time I'm awake and I'm not still in a dream. 
And man, I, I tell you, I just, I stared at the ceiling for the rest of the night just thinking about what I had experienced. And uh, needless to say, there was no I told you so and having a good laugh in the morning like I originally had planned. Um, so this is, this is something I, uh, I've become passionate about, and I like to share it with people, and I like to talk about this kind of stuff. And for those of you who are into this kind of thing, what you found, I'm sure, just like what I found, is that there are very few people in the world, uh, at least personally that I know, uh, that are open to this sort of discussion. So hence my YouTube videos and my blog. Uh, this is a way for me to share it with people and to discuss it and to uh, hopefully continue learning about it. So that was my first experience. That is what got the ball rolling for me. And uh, man, I tell you, I've been hooked ever since. If this is something you have not experienced, I highly, highly recommend you doing research. Uh, maybe try out try out the ramp timer method. Take a look at Lucidology 101. Maybe I'll do another, uh, another video and specifically describe the way that I set this up. Uh, but, you know, find a way to experience this. This is absolutely amazing. It's absolutely life-changing. And if you're like me and you're skeptical, just give it a shot. You don't have anything to lose, um, and it's incredible. So uh, that's it for this one. I will talk to you guys again soon. Uh, as always, ask questions, uh, share with other people, make comments. I, I would love to uh, get some feedback and to have some, next, some questions to answer on my next video. So I'll talk to you guys soon. See you later.